Empirical formulae is the simplest whole number ratio of elements present in a molecule. It is often calculated using something called combustion analysis. This is where we combust around 2 milligrams of a sample in pure oxygen. This converts it into carbon dioxide, water, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen. Gas chromatography is then used to separate the products and thermal conductivity is used to determine the mass of each of the products. Once the mass of the products is found, then you can calculate the empirical formulae. When calculating empirical formulae, it is useful to set out your working in a table like this, where you have the elements at the top, the masses that have been found from combustion analysis, then the gram formula mass. You would then do mass divided by gram formula mass to get the moles of each of the elements present, and then the final step, you divide each of these moles divided by the smallest number. This will then give you the empirical formulae in this form. Let's have a look at an example. Here we have a sample of a nitrogen containing compound which is found to contain 2.1 grams of carbon, 2.45 grams of nitrogen and 0.7 grams of hydrogen. So we'll insert these into the table. In the next line, we'll put in the gram formula mass, 12 for carbon, 1 for hydrogen, and 14 for nitrogen. We'll then do mass divided by gram formula mass to find the moles. So this is 0 0.175 for carbon, 0 0.7 for hydrogen, and 0 0.175 for nitrogen. The smallest number is the 0 0.175 for the carbon and the nitrogen. So if we divide by the smallest, we have 0 0.175 divided by 0 0.175 to give you 1, 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.175 to give you 4, and 0 0.175 divided by 0 0.175 to give you 1. The empirical formula will then be CH4N. This is the simplest ratio and the actual molecular formulae may be any multiple of this empirical formulae. Sometimes it is necessary to calculate the masses of the elements present before carrying out the empirical formulae calculation. This example shows how to do this. Complete combustion of 3.5 mg on an organic compound produced 7.02 mg of carbon dioxide and 2.86 grams of milligrams of water. No other products were formed. As this tells us no other products were formed, we know that the compound must only have contained carbon, hydrogen and possibly oxygen. The first thing that we're going to do is to calculate the mass of carbon that was contained within the compound. So we're going to be using the mass of the carbon dioxide to do this. So for CO2, the moles of CO2 produced will be the mass divided by the gram formula mass. In this case, we're just going to pretend that this is in grams, as this makes the calculation easier. So if we have 7.02 divided by 44, which is the gram formula mass of carbon dioxide, we get 0 0.16. It would be best not to round this number and leave it on your calculator for this calculation. As we have a one-to-one -one mole ratio between carbon dioxide and carbon, we know that the moles of carbon will also be 0 0.16. This means we can work out the mass directly doing moles times gram formula mass of carbon. So we'll have 0 0.16 times 12 to give you a mass of 1.92. If we look now at the water, we have 2.86 milligrams of water. So we're going to carry out the same process. First of all, we're going to carry out the moles, which equals mass divided by gram formula mass. So that is 2.86 divided by 18. Gives you 0.16. And this time we have a 2 to 1 ratio. So we need to multiply the moles of water by 2 to find out the moles of hydrogen. And then we can work out the mass. So the mass will be moles times gram formula mass this time. So we'll have 0 0.32 
times 1, which gives us 0 0.32 milligrams of hydrogen. If we then add these two together, this will give us the total mass um, of the organic compound that was carbon and hydrogen, and from there we can work out how much was oxygen. So adding these together, we'll have 1.92 plus 0 0.32 equals 2.24. The total mass was 3.5. That means that whatever is left over has to be the mass of oxygen. That gives us a mass of oxygen of 1.26. We can now put these numbers into the table that we've used previously. So here we have 1.92 for the carbon gram formula mass of 12 and if we calculate the moles we'll get 0 0.16. For hydrogen we have 0 0.32 gram formula mass of 1 so we're just dealing with H on its own so that'll be 0 0.32 for the moles and then finally the oxygen we have 1.26 divided by 16 to give us 0 0.08. In the final step, we need to divide by the smallest number, which is 0 0.08. So we'll have 0.16 divided by 0 0.08 equals 2. 0.32 divided by 0 0.08, which equals 4. And 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.08 which equals 1. This means that the overall empirical formulae will be C2, H4, O. Try pausing the video now and attempting these two questions. For question 1, assume that the percentages can just be turned into masses. For question two, you will need to work out the mass of each of the elements first. It is common to be given a question where you're given the percentage of each of the elements. For questions like this, we can just turn these percentages straight into the mass. So we're going to have carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. We have mass of 79.25, 5.66 and 15.09. Gram formula mass will have 12, 1 and 16 and then dividing mass by gram formula mass lets you calculate moles. So here we'll have 6.604, 5.66 and 0 0.943. When we divide by the smallest the smallest number we have here is the oxygen at 0.94. When we divide by that, we'll have 7, 6 and 1, giving an empirical formulae of C7H6O. For question 2, we need to work out the mass of each of the elements first. That means we need to carry out the procedure that I showed you in the second example. So if we deal with the carbon first, we have 3.52 grams of carbon dioxide. So first of all, we will work out the moles of carbon dioxide by doing mass divided by gram formula mass. This gives us moles of carbon dioxide of 0 0.08. The moles of your carbon will be the same and from that you can work out the mass. which is 0 0.96 grams of carbon in the compound. Looking now at the water, this will allow us to calculate the mass of hydrogen. So moles of water will be mass divided by gram formula mass. So it's 1.44 divided by 18. And that's again 0 0.08. You have a 2 to 1 ratio, so you need to multiply that by 2 for the moles of hydrogen.
which gives you a mass of hydrogen in the compound of 0 0.16. If we add those two together, we can then calculate what the mass of oxygen would be. We have 0 0.96 plus 0 0.16 to give us a total of 1.12. And if we do the total mass of the compound, which is 1.7 gram, 1.76 grams, minus the 1.12 that's accounted for, that gives us a mass of oxygen of 0 0.64. We then need to put this into the table that we've used previously. The mass of carbon was 0 0.96 grams, the mass of hydrogen was 0.16 and the mass of oxygen was 0.64. If we then divide by the gram formula mass for each of the elements, we have 12, 1 and 16 and that will give us the moles present in the compound. And then for our final step, we're dividing by the smallest. The smallest number we have present is oxygen at 0 0.04. So this then gives us 2, 4 and 1 as our ratio. So we'll have C2H4O. Questions like this are often included with mass spec data where you're asked to find out the molecular formula. Remember that the molecular formula can be any multiple of the empirical formula. Thank you for watching this video on Empirical Formulae. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe or follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos.